Hey guys, I'm Tyler and welcome back. Today, we are gonna make a Murphy bed. This bed has got floating shelves that double as the legs. We got a regular old shelf right over there and the whole thing folds up right into the wall, nice and minimal. If you guys would like to build this, there is a set of plans on my website, DIYTyler.com. Link in the description down below. To get this project kicked off, as with most of my projects, we're going to begin at the table saw and rip down a bunch of 3 quarter inch sheets of plywood. I am using all Pure Bond plywood from Columbia Forest Products, who is actually one of the sponsors of today's video. All of their plywood is manufactured right here in North America and is formaldehyde free, which is much better for your health. You can find Pure Bond exclusively at the Home Depot. After ripping everything down on the table saw, I used a door board and my circular saw to cut down the wider cross cuts that wouldn't fit on my miter saw. I find that it really helps to use a strip of blue painter's tape to help with the chip out on that thin veneer. Once I had finished the wider cross cuts, it was time to go over to the miter station and cut down the remaining pieces using the miter saw. Now on to one of my favorite tasks in the workshop, edge banding. Don't know why I like it, there's just something about it that I thoroughly enjoy. I would highly recommend if you're going to be building this project that you get a large roll of edge banding and I find mine on Amazon, link to that in the description below if you are interested. Definitely spring for the big roll. And a quick tip, these little side nippers from Fast Cap save you a ton of time. I used to scoff at the idea and use a razor blade, but it's much, much quicker to use the straight edge and just look at the transformation with that edge banding. A lot of projects in my shop seem to run through the Craig jig at some point in time. Maybe it was just one of the first tools that I bought and it's a little nostalgic or it's just practical. I use two different Craig jigs here to get the holes on the longer boards which make up the bed frame and then assembling that bed frame on my assembly table using wood glue and one and a quarter inch coarse pocket hole screws. And hey, if you guys aren't subscribed already, why don't you hit the subscribe and the bell right down to the bottom right corner of the video so you never miss when we upload a new one. After laying out the two portions of plywood that make the base of the bed frame which holds the mattress, I slid the frame in place, added glue, and fastened the whole thing down with one and a quarter inch coarse pocket hole screws. And then to add a little bit more support for that mattress, I added some stringers at various intervals using wood glue and one and a quarter inch screws. Assembling the Murphy frame itself was a little bit more tricky. It was so big and awkward in the shop I had to get a little bit ingenious with the way I held things I used a clamp here and there to hold things on the opposite end of what I was gluing and screwing together And I used some rockler right angle brackets to hold everything on the other end nice and steady Everything was assembled once again with wood glue and one and a quarter inch screws The headboard is just two pieces of plywood attached at right angles and then screwed into place using pocket screws onto the Murphy frame. It is always a good idea to get rid of as much glue squeeze it as you can. A quick pass with a straw and a wet cloth does wonders. If you have purchased the plans and took a look at them, you'll notice that the Murphy frame itself is edge banded with solid oak versus just the add-on edge banding. I wanted to do this to add a little bit more durability to that edge for people possibly banging into the corner. I cut this out of solid oak and then fastened in place with wood glue and one and a quarter inch brads. Thank you. 
And now is a good time to drill the holes for the placement of the swivel brackets that allow the motion of the Murphy bed. I will warn that this is not the proper location according to the plans. This was an error on my part and they since have been updated. I first drilled a pilot hole from the inside and then countersunk from the outside to accept a quarter twenty machine screw. And then it was back to the table saw to cut even more 3 quarter inch plywood up to make the floating shells which also double as the legs when the Murphy bed is in the down position. I also cut up a section of 2 by 6 to 1 and a half by 1 and a half. I'm going to breeze through the assembly of these floating shells because I've done something very similar in the past and I will link to that in the card at the top right hand corner of your screen if you would care to check that out and get yourself a little bit more detail. Basically I made a quick bracket out of the 2x6 material and then wrapped it in the 3 quarter inch oak edge banded plywood. I first added the top and bottom portions and then the sides and all of this is mitered to have continuous grain all the way around the shelf. You will notice that I left the side portions longer and this is so I could cut it on the table saw and make sure everything was nice and flush across the back. And I do gotta say, this was probably the single most terrifying thing I've ever done with the table saw. I went nice and slow, but just having the blade this high was very, very uncomfortable. I then had the wherewithal to pre-sand the back of this bed frame before adding the shelves, measured for the placement of those shelves, pre-drilled the screws a little bit, and then transferred their placement using a quick tap of my fist, and then screwed into place. Once they were held in place from the front, I countersunk from the back and added a longer deck screw for a little bit more support. I then sanded the rest of the bed using 180 grit sandpaper. Because it was pretty well sanded plywood already, this is all I needed to do. I'm going to be using some General Finishes high performance top coat for the finish on this Murphy bed. I'm actually going to be tinting this with a little bit of water based stain. This is a fantastic solution for not having to spend the hours hand staining this entire bed. This was perfect. I mixed it up about 5% stain to the high performance top coat. The only word of warning I have for this method is be very consistent with your spraying as thicker areas will color differently. And I'm going to be spraying this with a Fuji Q5 Platinum with a 1.3 millimeter tip, which you can find at Fujispray.com, who happens to be the other sponsor of today's video. The Q5 Platinum is a very high power HVLP spray system, and it's absolutely fantastic. You have seen me spray latex paint with this, clear coats, and even tinted clear coats like today. Such a time saver to have such a powerful, dynamic and adjustable HVLP system. You can find out more about them at Fujispray.com, link in the description below. Once everything was dry, we moved it into the house and with the help of my brothers, we set everything up in the office where this bed is going. And this is where I ran into the issue with the bearing placement, which again has been updated in the plans. Proof that not everything is perfect with the builds. This is a design flaw that I had. If you guys purchase the plans, this has already been taken accounted for. You'll notice that this bracket is inset into the frame a little bit to account for this rotation problem. But something I didn't catch in the design, when I got all the bolts in here, this is going to rotate over my trim and that's right up against that. So I can't actually rotate if I have this bolt in. And you need all four bolts in this bracket to prevent it from sliding down when you try to tilt the bed up. So what I'm going to do is take a Forstner bit and basically dado out the back of this two thirds or so and uh, pretty much all the way down so that we can get that bolt in. With that little repair behind us, it was back to the assembly. We laid the bed frame portion in place inside the frame, and then using those quarter 20 machine screws, fastened everything in place. It was definitely a little bit tricky to hold the bolts in there, but a pair of needle nose pliers made decently quick work of the assembly. Mm -hmm. 
To prevent the entire frame from tipping over, the frame is fastened to the wall into studs using a pair of L brackets. And to hold the bed portion up into the frame, I used a 5 16 bolt that goes all the way through the frame into the bed frame itself and it kind of fits into a notch there and there is one on either side. Added the full size mattress and gave it a quick test. And here you can see the motion of storing the bed. Not as easy as a more expensive kit, but certainly easy enough for me and most average adults to store. Well this was the first time using that tinted finished method and I gotta say I am ecstatic. This came out fantastic and it will be such a gigantic time saver for future projects that need a stain but simply do not have the time to apply it. Well there you are guys, a super practical build, fun, and at a fraction of the price compared to if you were to buy an online hardware kit. Again, if you guys would like to build this, there are a set of plans on DIYTyler.com, link in the description down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this build. If you did, please hammer that thumbs up button, helps us out a ton. I'm DIY Tyler, and you guys have a good one.